All right, everybody, let's go, let's go. We have come so far and we are coming close to the end. This is now leaving a toxic environment, step four. So to recap our first three, number one was realization. So we were able to sit down, think about what are you feeling? What are you experiencing? And just basically trying to be as objective about your situation as possible. Number two was agreeing with change. So after you have done your assessment, you realize, okay, I don't only need to know this in mind, but I have to be saying, you know what? I've got to now make moves to make change. So that mental decision that you make. Number three was visualizing. So figuring out your destination. If here does not necessarily align with the way that you want your life to look or the goals that you have, then you thought about what are your goals and what form does it take? What does that actually look like? What environment is that? And now we come to step four where we talk about the practicals and just mapping out what it takes to get there. So this is number four, game plan. And so I don't have a whole bunch of things to say about this. This really uh, takes time on your own to really um, think about it actually does not take long. And again, I believe, if I remember correctly, I did mention that there are different categories of people. There are some, some people who will be able to, maybe you've already thought about this. It was just a matter of you getting the courage to act on it. So there's some people who are just like, this is just their breaking point. They're just like, you know what? I'm all set. And they can just get up and go. But sometimes for others, you might find that you actually might need help. So maybe you're in a situation where you've realized everything that's going on with you, but you're kind of at a loss about like, okay, what what actually, if I'm to do this, where do I go first? What do I actually do? And so you can have other people uh, come in and workshop this with you. It could be a trusted friend. It could be an advisor of some sort, you know, um, I even, this is what I do. This is my life's work. Um, so in this, in, in the business that I run, um, I am able to coach people on this stuff. So we can work together to find practical plans. So whoever that resource is, whoever that wealth of knowledge may be, you might find that you need to add some people into the equation so that you can properly map out how will I get from where I'm at to where I need to get. So you want to include, so depending on what it is that you're dealing with, certain factors you might want to include is timeline, right? So figuring out on the back end, how long is all this going to take? What are the lead times for certain things? Um, as an example of one of the environments I had to um, eventually part from, it, uh, I had a living situation that I was in. And the thing is, is that there, the moment in which I was thinking about leaving or moving you know, my lease wasn't up yet. So maybe you might be in a situation like that where if you actually, if your toxic environment actually happens to be your home, then maybe there are certain uh, circumstances like that that you want to figure out. Are there certain clauses that would allow you? And I believe that I kind of looked at it kind of sort of. I don't think that what I was going through was necessarily grounds to be able to break my lease early. I think I was attempting to kind of sort of look at it, but then I didn't. But the, the thing with me too is that I was also having to battle, right? So I mentioned about step zero. I had my moments of kind of internally going back and forth. Yes, I said that, you know, I, I wouldn't um, renew another uh, year lease, but it was still up to me to stand on that, you know what I mean? And not go back and forth. And so because of my empathetic nature, and thinking, oh, well, maybe there's still hope yet, I almost pulled back on what the things that I said I would do. So uh, so those are certain things to consider like that. Like, what does the timeline look like? How long would it actually take for things to come about? Again, for some people, it can be immediate. For other people, it might be different. You know, who exactly does this involve? So I talked about who could workshop this with you if you're kind of a bit confused or you need some guidance on what your next steps actually look like. Um, and in addition to what I would like for you to do to integrate into your game plan is 
even if people are not necessarily workshopping this for you, um, because you have been dealing with your situation for a while and therefore you are kind of meshed and attached to where you are or your particular circumstance, it's good to just have people as a general support system. So even if they might not be at the planning table uh, with you, but the people that you have by your side to continue to give you support and to continue to give you validation, because we will get into this um, in the step five video, but the hardest part is actually going to be the implementation. So right now you're still you're still thinking on it, you're constructing the plan, but it's actually really, really hard to do. And what typically happens when you are trying to leave a toxic environment is that the, the person or the people that you're attached to, they don't really wanna let you go. You know what I mean? Um, maybe some of you watching, you have already attempted to go before. And then somebody hit you with the baby I can change and you fell for it. And now some time has passed and here you are still here and baby, they did not change. So you don't want for, for people to be able to uh, pull the okie doke on you because they really could and would do it if they know it's effective. So that's going to be saved uh, for the next video. But um, sometimes you need those people where... If you're conflict, you're finding a conflict within yourself to actually go forward with a thing that you said that you wanted to do, right? That someone can bring you back and say, well, they can even ask clarifying questions. I mean, some people have a more harsher approach than others. They're like, it, you know, some people are just would um, take a more inquisitive approach and be like, well, are you okay with that or whatever? And then I know some people where I'm actually kind of glad I had some of these people um, at some point, but they were just like, Okay, so then what? So you're going to stay and you're going to, like, you know, sometimes you need somebody to kind of like say that every once in a while. I think, um, you know, within reason, you don't need someone too abrasive, but sometimes you need that abrasive thing to be like, bro, what are you doing? Like, you're going to do this. You're going to fall back again. You're going to deal with this again, 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 again. So, so whoever you have as your support system, I want you to integrate that into your game plan. I think it's actually very, very important. So when you lack the will, those who support you, one, they understand you, two, they're on your side, and three, they will help you so that when you're tempted to give up, they're going to be the ones to kind of be, you know, be, be guards for you, I guess, for lack of a better term. Um, and then the next thing too is, right, considering the hypothetical. So I briefly touched on it and I'm going to touch on it more in step five, but you know the people that you're around or the person that, or the person who you're in a relationship with. And so I want you to consider hypotheticals. So I didn't really, I think I might've missed this in step one. I think I talk about it a little bit more in step zero, but one of the things that I had to do um, whenever I have a situation which I need to leave is within step one, I not only realize and think about what I'm feeling or experiencing, but I'm also taking time to uh, confront my fears. So the fears are the things like, oh, well, what are they going to think and what are they going to do? And, you know, I can't leave them or whatever. But also too so that's one part of it but the fears could also be like what 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 do i actually think is going to happen if i say hey i'm out of here you know like what would actually be in that moment of confrontation what do i think is going to happen and a lot of the times what you might think is probably irrational maybe um maybe there's actual validity to it but i remember having to sit down and think you know, if I was to go say, what do I think is going to happen? I'm like, are they, are they going to punch me? I'm like, they're not going to do that. You know what I mean? And first, and again, not everybody's situation is different. So in these situations, I knew that nobody was going to flex on me. You know, nobody was going to try to get physical with me. But I just, I don't know, I just kept thinking to myself, like, I, I realized that my fear of confrontation one is just one I don't just don't like drama so 
you know, maybe maybe they could have yelled at me. Maybe they could have gotten um, high energy with me. Um, but really, I just was thinking more about, you know, their feelings. That's what I ended up coming through with. And I was just like, no, well, I think I, I think I can do it. I can have the courage if I know that whatever it is. And so again, everyone's situation is different. Maybe there is a physical, a potential physical after effect, in which case that's going to ha need to have some real delicacy with it. Um, you're going to need to handle that delicately and you're going to really need to plan that well. And you're definitely going to need people um, so that you can be protected, you know, when, when it comes to this point, if you know that you cannot safely leave a place. So, um, but consider certain things like that um, and, and push past it. And then the hypotheticals really is because when you want to go, there's the baby I can change. When you want to go, there's the like, oh, no, no, no. Like, um, but are you, you, you know, you don't have to do all that. You don't have to, whatever. like, it's just all the, it could be the, 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 um, some of the gaslighting or the manipulation or just like, you know, it can vary. And again, I'm going to save that for step five, but be ready. Your tool for the hypotheticals is going to be boundaries. You're going to want to start developing, um, different boundaries to say that no means no and yes means yes like here, here's what I'm gonna do um you know some people might talk about things like um the 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 idea of like gray rocking or whatever it is so you'll figure out because you because you know these people you know these people and you know their tendencies and so you you've seen it got get real bad so what are you going to do to make sure that um, you're protected and that you're safe? So that is also going to be part of the game plan that's going to keep you grounded, that's going to keep you firm. And so that's really all the things that I have to say about step four. You might find that there are other questions that you do have. And if you have them, please do add that in the comments or send me emails. I'm always happy to answer any of those different things. If you would like to reach out to me, my uh, information is in the description per usual. If you are looking to really see how um, all these steps so far from, or all the way through from step zero to step five, how they can um, look like practically, you know, feel free to uh, grab my book, Guide to Freedom, Exiting from Toxic Environments and Cults. This is where, um, these really get fleshed out in a different way and you're able to see two instances in my personal experience on how these kind of came together and maybe that would give you more clarity if there be any confusion it uh, will be in the description so you can click on that link it's also available on amazon and kindle books so i hope you do grab a copy and it's dumb short i'm talking you can get through it within 30 to 45 minutes really depending on how fast you read um and so Feel free to grab it. I promise you will not regret it. And because I have a tendency to just be comical w without cue, I think you'll get a good laugh out of it as well as it being really, really informative. So I will catch you on step five. Thank you for going on this journey with me. And I pray and hope that this has been super duper helpful for you. It's been empowering for you. And most of all, you feel validated in everything that you've been going through. So catch you later and have a good one.